it's the next level. Wait, some party you're throwing. Isn't it the best? <laughs> I mean, I'd hope the Ice Bros would show, but Loki himself, Prince Loki? <laughs> Are you kidding? I wouldn't miss this for the world. Listen, bud, clean up this mess and leave this planet. What? No, I like it here. Everyone likes me. We're having a great time. Till you showed up. Welcome back to Panels to Pixels. I'm Steve, and this week I am joined by another special guest, Daphne. Welcome, Daphne. Thanks, Steve. I'm really happy to be here to get to talk about this episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to talk about this episode with somebody else who liked it. So uh, yeah, I that's, did. That's one thing for sure. Yeah. Uh, but before we before we get started to get too deep into it, make sure to let people know this is a spoiler full podcast of episode seven of Marvel's What If What If Thor were an only child, and it's a, a pretty good synopsis this week. It says Thor, who never learned to be a good hero, throws an out of control intergalactic party on Earth. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. Before we get into the episode itself, what have you thought of the like the, the show overall so far? I really have enjoyed this because I like that we're seeing things like on a flip side, like in a different universe. This is what could have happened had other things not taken place. So I've really enjoyed it overall. I actually have preferred like the darker episodes, but Thor is one of my favorites. So this was a lot of fun to see him be, you know, the party prince and doing his thing. So it was a lot of fun. I feel like. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I feel like it it ticked all the boxes and I loved all the characters they threw in because they know that we're paying attention to that. So they know that we're going to be looking for stuff like that and they delivered on it. So I'm really happy. Exactly. We got to see them all cut loose. Exactly, exactly. Well, I guess that's kind of already, uh, you've already launched into your thoughts of the episode, your overall thoughts of the episode. Uh, I'm the same way. I loved it. It was good to get back to some humor. You know, I'm with you. I don't all, it doesn't always have to be light, but there needs to be kind of a balance, you know? Yeah. But I was, I was really surprised when I heard other podcasts and read some feedback on other podcasts that people just did not like this this episode or didn't like maybe they didn't like the take on the character or or i'm not even sure what all they didn't like but uh i i loved it i loved it it was uh it was good to have a lighthearted episode especially after the last two two three that we've had yeah we definitely have had some darker episodes and it's been hard um i was a guest on house podcast to talk about the zombie episode which I love zombies, so it was a lot of fun, but it was also still Mm -hmm. very dark seeing the demise of characters that we've grown to love over the last decade. It was really hard to watch them go through that. And um, the whole, uh, you know, this was the last job for Chadwick Boseman, one of the last things he did before he died. And though he didn't have anything in this episode, I was really touched by things that happened in previous episodes because I was a big and am a big fan of his. And so it was just really difficult to, but also, you know, it's just touching to hear yeah, yeah, his final it, performances. I totally agree. It was, it was great. And uh, with that, we should go ahead and launch into our five top five discussion points Who are you? Darcy, big fan. (laughs) By the way, totally thought you were going to be a dude captain, but look at you, all not. If I exert my full powers, I blow a crater in this planet. Taking down Kappa Kappa Frat Freak won't be worth the fatalities. Ooh, what about South Dakota? Or North Dakota? Uh, I need to get this. As always, I like to have the guest go first, so take it away, Daphne. All right, well, my number five is Darcy, Darcy, Darcy. Darcy. Oh my gosh. She is the humor that we all have needed forever. She's so much fun. I feel like there are so many quotable moments from this episode. In fact, when I was coming up with my favorite quotes from the episode, it was really hard for them (laughs) not all to be her because she was hilarious. 
Um, Kat Dennings is incredible. And I, I really enjoyed her character even more, you know, Darcy as a whole is just so much fun. So I like that she inadvertently gave Jane the idea to call Thor's <laughs> mom, which I thought was really funny. And I have, I have some notes on that later when we, when we get to one of my other numbers about Thor and very, very yeah. cool. Well, mine is, <laughs> is in a similar vein. Cause I do love Kat Dennings. I, D- Dennings. I'm sorry. I always, always mess that up. Uh, I loved her on three broke girls and uh, just <laughs> her voice is just so distinctive and, her humor, her style of humor is, is great, but I just, I loved all, we talked about it a little bit already, but all the amazing, the different cameos we got and the, the original actors coming back. I mean, how do you get Jeff Goldblum to do what was it like three lines? I think in this thing, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but he was definitely grandmaster yes. in this episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He was yeah. great. They had Seth green. They had, and all the other background characters that even didn't speak. It was great to see those little cameos. And I know like, I think some of the criticisms of this episode was, well, how can this person be there? Because this hasn't happened yet. And, and why would this person be involved? Because this hasn't happened yet. And I'm like, it's a what if episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alternate universe. Yeah. It, things don't happen the same way. And I think all of the other episodes in the series have shown us that it's not the same timeline. It is a completely different timeline. And honestly, when I watch it, I just... Keep an open mind and enjoy it and know that at the end of the day, we can all go back to the timeline that we're used to. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I was just like, I, I didn't understand why people were so were upset about those kind of things. But uh, but yeah, that's mine. Just all those amazing cameos and all the, the you know, Jamie Alexander coming back. And I love to, when I watch it uh, on my iPad, I will pause it at the, uh, the credits and I'll take a screen capture of it so that I can see, okay, who all came back, who didn't come back and, you know, disappointed to not have Brie Larson back, but at least we got all oh, so many of the rest of them that were just outstanding. They've done such a great job when even in the cases that the original actor or actress didn't come back, they found someone who was close enough. So it wasn't as jarring as it could have been. Because so many of the original actors came back for the roles, mm-hmm. which made it, I think it endeared you and connected you more and maybe even made it a little bit more sad because you were hearing those voices of those characters. It was really connecting you to it. So I think that they did a good job to try to use people that sounded similar enough that it wasn't so disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what's your next one? My next one is Loki. I didn't find him as menacing in this one or mischievous. He was still kind of funny. I didn't understand why he was so big. Um, I didn't get that. Um, But I found it hilarious the way that he and um, Thor and just in general. And that kind of ties into my number three. So I don't want to go too far with that. But I did like Loki as a whole, just being different. And Tom Hiddleston, Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that, you know, he's in this Disney Plus universe of things because it's always a joy to listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to switch mine around a little bit here because my, my next one will be Thor and Loki's the the bromance kind of thing there, the relationship that they had that I, I thought was great. Um, yeah, I don't understand why he was giant. I, I don't know why he was blue because I guess he was blue. Didn't Odin have to put some sort of an enchantment on him or something to make him look like an Asgardian? I don't remember Thor well enough. I to... I don't. I'm not sure. But he wasn't just blue. He was huge. Yeah, like he was bigger. And I mean, when he had Thor's phone, and he <laughs> just got hilarious. this little thing. That was crazy. I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, of course, he drops it and breaks it. But he's being so moment. funny. So funny with Jane on the phone when he's talking yes. to her. Ooh, this is the new lady. And it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I, it was just a lot of fun. I love that moment with him dropping the phone because it, right after that, she then throws her phone. And you hear the same, the same, almost the same sound effect when, when she throws her phone across, across the room. So, yeah, it was hilarious. I just, I loved the fact that they all left. With, he's like, we're out of here. You're not, you're no fun anymore, you know, and we're out of here, <laughs> Thor. We're going to leave you to clean things up. So, yeah, it was great. It was great. So what's your next one? Yeah. 
Okay, so my next one actually ties into yours. It's Thor and Loki's relationship in this world. Because mm-hmm. we're used to them having a relationship where they, they fight each other. They get along. I mean, they have a really interesting relationship. And interesting really isn't the word I want for that, though. I feel like it's complicated. They have a very complicated relationship in the timeline that we know of. Mm -hmm. In this one, they look like frat brothers. Um, And even though they didn't grow up together, they still, you know, they know that they're brothers from another mother. But they still seem close and they get along really well until it's time to clean up after the party. Yes. Which didn't go too well. And I thought it was really funny, though. Some of the things that, you know, Thor said, or Loki said to Thor about um, cleaning up after the party. He's like, now you're the pooper or something yeah. like that. So I found that really funny. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, had a, I had a note and I couldn't find it, but I remember a note about that was I thought it was really kind of cool. There's that the beginning when the watcher gives his opening monologue, he talks about how heroes are made and how they're made through relationship and how Thor Mm -hmm. is not, is not the great hero that we know because he didn't have that, that relationship with Loki. And that ties into the last episode because in the last episode, Tony Stark was a hero who was forged through Mm -hmm. suffering through, you know, through uh, trials and tribute and the tribulations of being in that, uh, in that dungeon. You know, and he didn't have that. So he became a different hero. And I think it's great that we're seeing mm-hmm. these different ways that, that heroes are kind of forged or developed. Um, I, I, right along yeah, that, right, I agree. Uh, right along with everything we're talking about with Thor. I loved th- this portrayal of Thor. I think Chris Hemsworth had a lot of fun with it. It sounded to me, uh, just from his voice acting, it sounded to me like he had a lot of fun with it. That uh, this was the Thor from Ragnarok or kind of the Thor a little bit from Ragnarok. But it's even more so, you know, to where, like you said, those that frat bros kind of thing but we also still had this this touching kind of romantic side to where he even brings flowers at the end there uh he brings flowers to jane uh and then but he's still the frat boy because he's like i can take you to a planet with all unicorns unicorn waiters you know Who doesn't want to go to a planet full of unicorns? Come I, on. I, I can't. That would be a great a great dinner place to take a date, you know? Yes, so. it would. <laughs> as long as the horns don't yeah. get... Don't, it, it, that's a whole... I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a whole other discussion for another day. <laughs> so what's your next one? My number two is Captain Marvel... She was great in this episode. Like you, I wish that Brie Larson had done the voice, but I felt like the actress who did the voice did a, you know, she did a decent enough job. She didn't pull me out of thinking, oh, that's a terrible voice or that doesn't match up to -hmm. what I was thinking. I love that she came and she was honestly like the older sister to him. That's the dynamic that I got from the two of them is she was the one trying to get him to behave and he wasn't listening. You know, he called her a party pooper and everybody started (laughs) chanting about it, Yeah, which was crazy. Um, And he threw um, Mjolnir and it came back and he's like hammering, get it? (laughs) It just just made me laugh so hard. And I love their interactions Um, at Stonehenge when she gets there and almost knocks one of the stones over and she gets nervous. And so she she keeps it from falling. And then he just comes up and says, but I just have to do a little boo. <laughs> oh, no, your weird rocks have fallen over. Killed me. Yeah, I just it thought was... it was just, it was so funny. And I also liked uh, the music during the fight scene reminded me a lot of like a video game. Yeah. Yeah. When I was and that, watching it. So. And that leads right into my next, my, my number two, which is that fight between Captain Marvel and Thor. You know, it's one of those, it's one of those uh, classic things that we've always talked about that uh, I think Captain Marvel is is the most powerful maybe not now with Scarlet Witch being what she is but she's also powered by a uh, a stone as well yeah but I I think Captain Marvel if not the most powerful is definitely one of the most powerful uh, characters super uh, super powered characters in in the Marvel universe and and she could you know, it's one of the, it's the whole Superman conundrum. She could do it all by herself if she wasn't just one person. 
you know. Yeah. Um, but I chuckled. I chuckled every time when they stopped. I, I don't know if they were in Australia or where they were, but uh, she's standing there and Thor's got his hand out and he's waiting for Mjolnir and he's just like, wait for <laughs> it. Wait for it, you know, and then it's because it's flying all the way around the earth to catch up with them. Um, yeah, but I, I, I chuckled every time I watched that one and the fight. It really reminded me of I don't. Did you watch uh, Invincible? I did not, but it's okay. on my list. OK, there's a I don't want to spoil anything for you uh, then, but there's a, a very similar fight uh, towards the end of Invincible. And I won't say anything more about that. Don't read my notes. OK. <laughs> All right. <laughs> In fact, I, won't. Um, I will just delete them <laughs> so that you don't, uh, you don't scroll past them. Um, yeah, I have to finish Ted Lasso before I can move on to that. Okay. Oh, Ted Lasso is so good. It really is. <laughs> All right. So we're down to our number ones. Yes. So for me, my number one is Chris Hemsworth, Thor the Party Prince himself. He was so extravagant. What struck me in this episode is he sounds like every teenage kid that's pushing the boundaries of what's allowed by their parents. He's afraid of his mother finding out about his escapades. He's not able to focus on things like when he's talking to Jane. He just keeps moving from one thing to another and he kind of babbles, which is such a difference from what we saw in the films where he was so regal about things. But he goes around destroying things. But as soon as he finds out that his mother is coming and Jane telling his mother, Jane taking the time to go and, and tell. And he says, my mother is coming. And no one seemed to care. Loki tells him that he sounds like his father. And I'm like, oh, so this could be the turning point where he starts to grow up a little bit. Because he was being mischievous he was kind of like a combination of thor and loki mm -hmm. in the only child i mean yeah. because some of the things he would do, was doing was very very mischievous but i love when he kind of took control and he stood up to all of his yeah. friends and said my mother is coming and she's not happy at all so they all go about making the world right and fixing all the things even the leaning tower of pisa which was leaning and was a landmark um and even captain marvel helped him at the end she brought him the um ipad with the pbs specials about human civilization which i thought was cool that she kind of yeah helped him out i thought that was great so yeah so that is my number one i loved you know thor as a as a i love thor as a whole in this episode because i feel like we got to see a different side and I really do feel like he was a combination of Thor and Loki from the timeline that we're used to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is my number one as well. I, I love the interactions with Humdell. Heimdall. How do you say his name? Um, I think it's Humdell. Yeah. Heimdall. And really the only thing he, I think he had one grunt, like in the whole episode, he doesn't even have any <laughs> lines. He just like grunts once, but I, I loved, you know, uh, Jane trying to call him and not thinking she's heard it. So Darcy grabs the, the microphone and she's like, well, the owner of the blue Prius, you know, yeah. just, uh, <laughs> was just hilarious to me. And uh, when, when they're about to nuke Siberia and Frigga shows up and you hear, I just loved how you hear Thor go <laughs> mother. And then you hear Captain Marvel go mother. And then all the shield agents go mother. So <laughs> it was just, it was just great. And then uh, Colby Smolder's, uh, character, you know, going, uh, you know, no, I think this is taken care of because the one guy wants, are we still going to do the nukes? Oh, we never get to do the nukes, you know, is great because he's no, of course I think we got this covered. We're going to stand down. So, cause the mother showed up. Cause mother knows best and exactly. Thor obviously is going to listen to his mother. Like, I don't remember that relationship being like that mm -hmm. so much. I mean, he loved his mother. But he never acted in a way that he needed his mother to check up on him or, you know, be his caretaker because he didn't act like that. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. irresponsible. Yeah. Maybe maybe only having one child to to raise made her more loose and relaxed in her parenting. I don't know. I don't know. She was very quick to leave her little spa retreat that she gets only every thousand years. Yeah. And I loved how she to said, I have to leave take Earth. Care of him. I, have, 
I have to leave early again. Like, like this has happened before. Like, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I took from that. I think most of my notes we've discussed. I've only got a couple that we didn't already talk about. And that is, uh, I'll go through those real quick, was uh, Fury uh, getting injured, uh, trying to get into the party and Samuel L. Jackson's line, uh, his Spicoli line was just hilarious to me. I, thought that was great. <laughs> I, I loved how both he and Captain Marvel used kind of 80s references when referring yes. to to Thor, what she calls him, White Snake, you know. Yes. Um, uh, and then the only other note I have is that that final scene. I did not know who that character was, the Ultra Vision or whatever they call. Uh, that, yeah, the guy I'm not sure the about that either. I had but to listen to some scary. other podcasts. Yeah, I had to listen to some other podcasts to learn who it was. So that's that was where from I, I think it's in Age of Ultron where Ultron's trying to merge himself with the Vision body, and yes. and that's and that there's makes like. Sense. A, I guess there's a storyline where it actually happened or there's a what if maybe where it actually happened. And so, but now this one's not only got the mind stone, he's got all the other infinity stones. So it does, it doesn't we'll look good where, for no, our heroes. We'll, we'll see where that takes us. If, uh, if we're to believe the promos for next week, but uh, I'm not, I'm not saying anything because I'm not believing any promos at this point. I have not watched the promos cause I try not to. Mm-hmm. I like to go in cold as much as I can with this with this show, and it's served me well so far, so I'm fine with not knowing too much. So is there anything you've got that we haven't already talked about? No, we already mentioned that they brought in a lot of the actors to reprise their roles with the voices, which was great. I think my only other comment is, and I think I said this earlier, was really hard to limit myself to a few quotes because mm-hmm. there were so many that I liked. I can't wait to watch it again and see all the background stuff that was going on that yeah. there's drunken stuff in the background that I kind of yes. noticed in my second watch that I really want to watch it again. And also I'm with you. There's no way I was trying to, to, to pick up the quotes and I've only got a couple here. Uh, Cause you've got a better uh, copy of the, the one that I did. So I'm going to let you do that one. But uh, uh, the other, the, the first quote I have really, I only have two is, uh, is Thor grew into a very different prince. And that's from the watcher at the beginning. And I, I that's an understatement, sir, that he grew up into a very different prince. <laughs> yes, so, he did. The party prince. Yes. The party prince. Yeah. That was fun. All right. And then I my have... only... Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Indeed okay, I'll go ahead with mine, and you can just mine. you can just run down yours. Uh, okay, <laughs> I loved when when uh, when Jane asked him. Uh, he was the Norse god of thunder, and he said, "Well, I don't know anything about horse gods, but I can bring the thunder." So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the look on her face said it all. <laughs> so mine are a couple from Darcy. The first one is. What, like E.T. and less like a haughty McScotty, Beach Body Ken, old school Amber Crombie catalog? I could go on. Let me. I'm like, yes, let her, because I want to hear what she has to say. And then there was one point where um, Jane was talking about making contact with Thor being the first contact for an alien species, I guess. And... <laughs> She said, it would be really bad for diplomatic relations. And Darcy says, diplomatic relations, is that what the kids are calling it? (laughs) Because, of course, earlier in the episode, Jane and Thor had, yeah. I'm pretty sure they hooked up. Yeah. (laughs) They definitely did. Um, There's the Captain Marvel quote, hey, White Snake, we need to chat, which I thought was funny. Um, Grandmaster, a.k.a. Jeff Goldblum, saying, release the foam. I loved how, how the music just <laughs> stops and everybody like at first everybody's like shocked and they're worried that something's going to happen. And then you get, you get Jeff Goldblum saying that line and it was just, he delivered that perfect. line so well. Yeah. It was perfect. Um, my last one is he's talking, uh, Thor is talking to Jane about the iPad that she has. And then he kind of turns his attention to her and says, and your eyes, do all geniuses have such deep, dark eyes? It's like watching the birth of two stars on the edge of the galaxy. And I just like that because I feel like it summed up 
the kind of relationship between the two of them that we saw in this episode. So those are my quotes. And it was very hard to only do five. Yes, I, I'm the same way. It just <laughs> it was hard for me to catch them uh, this time, but because they were so quick and they were so good. Let's see. Uh, podcast recommendations. I didn't fill any in here, but I do have one that I will recommend to people. And that's uh, one that our friend Ben recommended that I picked up and I've now recommended to other friends that have said they love it is a podcast called Smartless with uh, Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and the guy from Will and Grace. The name's escaping me. That's horrible. Oh, Sean okay. Hayes? Anyway, Sean Hayes. Thank is you. Is it yeah. Sean so Hayes? Yes, Sean Hayes. Sean yeah. Hayes, yeah. It's Smartless with Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and, and Sean Hayes. And every week they bring in a different person. One of them brings in a different celebrity or a different person for them to talk to, but doesn't tell the other two who it is before they come in. Oh, my gosh. The, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's it's a very fun conversation. You get to hear these guys banter, and they are just hilarious, these three guys together. That would be really difficult because you wouldn't have time to prepare and I'm someone who likes to have time to prepare if I'm going to interview someone or talk to anyone I like to have the at least the time to plan for what I'm going to be talking about you know who you have to do legwork and that that's just who I am so, so what else um, have you got I have, you had one I've got yes I have one it is a podcast called Detail Therapy, and it's with a former, well, she's kind of a YouTuber and vlogger and social media expert, and she's kind of pivoted into this role where she's helped just being a consultant and helping people go after the life that they want, and her name is Amy Landino, and I've been listening to her podcast for quite a while, and she's just always got somebody cool and different on to talk about how they went through or the processes they went through to be able to build the life and career that they wanted. And so for me, it's just a lot of fun to to listen to and, and see what other people are up to and how they went about things. Because then it can help, you know, it's one of those positive self-help type uh, podcasts that can get you on the right track. So I really, I recommend that one. It's called Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Very cool. So to submit your feedback, obviously you are listening to us on whatever podcast player of choice you have. Please, if you if you uh, are listening to us, go on there, give us a review, give us a thumbs up, a five stars, whatever that podcast player of choice uses for its reviews. We would love to to hear those. We have a website. I not sure if it's back up yet or not. Uh, panels to pixels podcast.com. We have a Facebook group though. The it's facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We put a post up in there when I remember to every week uh, for you to send your feedback in. And uh, we try to do promotion there, but I apologize to Mark and I apologize to the listeners. I've been a poor, poor promoter of the podcast this week. Um, also, we have an email address, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T O spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can send us an email there or a voicemail and we will play that. We have a YouTube channel, which is panels to pixels podcast. So please go in there, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, there's all the places you can find us. In fact, I saw it come out on YouTube last week, even earlier, I think, than normal. So. Uh, it's very, very cool to have that <laughs> <laughs> next week. I'm not sure who my co-host will be yet. I'll figure it out. Uh, we'll have the next episode of what if, but here, Daphne, where can listeners hear you? I know you've got a couple of things going. I do. Um, so me and my co-host Pake, who you heard here last week, have a podcast called run for your lives. It's disaster films. It's monster movies. It's anything that makes you run for your life, basically. Anything that's chasing you or scaring you and making you hightail it out of there. So we have our podcast, Run For Your Lives. Um, so this last week, we covered 30 Days of Night. And next week, we're covering Dawn of the Dead, 1978. It is the first of a two-part or two-episode double dip, which is what Paik is calling it. So I'm on that every week. We just came back from a hiatus. And then I've also, um, a co-host at House Podcastica. If anyone likes The Handmaid's Tale, we wrapped up season four of that quite a bit ago. 
But if you want to listen to that, um, I'm a guest there. And I also guested a few weeks ago covering the zombie episode of What If. Very cool. Very that cool. That is where I am. <laughs> I send voicemails uh, to various podcasts. I do what's called what we call live steving. I send that to Daphne and Pate for Run for Your Lives and other podcasts as well. So you can hear my voice on our friends. Pro- our friends are gracious enough. My friends are gracious enough to uh, let me <laughs> let me drop in on their podcasts and uh, and guest spot for a minute and a half to two minutes. It's uh, it's a fun time. And that's where you can hear me. Yes. And you know what? Live steving actually Pate coined that phrase. He did. From he the did. first time you did it for Run for Your Lives. Very cool. Yes, I gave him credit for that. So, Pate, thank you, brother. Well, that's been our episode, <laughs> our show, our review, our discussion of what if Thor were an only child. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we will see you on the next panel. Good night. Thank mm-hmm. you.